Greetings from the Charter School Office. I'm Albert Birch. I'm the Finance Specialist for the Office. This sheet is the review of the audited financial statements. It essentially takes the, the audit and summarizes it into four pages, as well as does a couple other calculations that are uh, supposed to be informational and thought-provoking. So I'll go through everything and uh, show you where everything's from and what it is, and uh, we'll go from there. So um, even though NHA uh, has the sweep agreement with the school, <clears throat> Excuse me. It's still important to uh, know what's on the audit because it's available to the public, uh, and this is the information they'll, they'll have access to on the state's website. So uh, that's why we thought it was important to share what we have and uh, information from the audit and be on the same page. So um, moving in to the sheet, the statement of that position is a, a section of the audit, and uh, as an example, I'll show you that these numbers match up to the audit directly. Um, total assets are one million one hundred fifty three thousand nine hundred and thirty one uh, going to the audit we'll see here's the statement in that position right here and uh, we'll we'll see our, our current assets our capital assets and then our uh, here's our total assets which one million one hundred fifty three thousand nine hundred and thirty one so we'll go back to our sheet and there's that number um, so you can you can verify those uh, down here we have our ending net position this is the, the ending net position is the end of for June 30th, 2014. Previous would be the amount for June 30th, 2013. So this lets you compare from year to year. Um, Keystone Academy had a slight increase in net position from last year. So uh, moving down, this section is the balance sheet section. Now this shows some of the current assets and these are, it's not labeled but it it, these are general fund current assets, but I'll show you that on the audit. So um, over here we have our general fund classifications. So uh, the fund classification, so we'll go to the audit real quick for a moment. Uh, the balance sheet is two pages after the statement of that position. So one, two, there's where it says balance sheet. Now if you recall, I said that those are general fund. So it's important to note that even though we, we do look at the school service fund and the totals, uh, those numbers are derived directly from this column, the, the general fund column. So um, here's our cash and our due from governmental revenue sources right there. As we scroll down, we'll see our fund balance classification of committed and unassigned. So going back to our sheet, um, we'll see the cash and due from governmental units over here. Um, but going over here, <coughs> excuse me, our fund balance classifications, unassigned amounts are amounts that are available for any purpose. These amounts are reported only in the general fund. Now there was uh, no assigned amount, um, but there is a committed amount, which uh, committed are amounts constrained to specific purposes by the board to be reported as committed. Amounts cannot be used for any other purpose unless the board takes action to remove or change the constraint. So if you're ever curious about what these other definitions are, um, they're right in the audit, so you can look those up at any time. I don't know the specific page because they're all different pages, but they are right in the audit. Uh, and, these, and these amounts should match up to the amounts we just show, showed or viewed. Um, going back up to this section, this is a, a quick snapshot of the activity up during the year. So here's our beginning general fund balance, the revenues, expenditures, other financing sources, net change, and ending general fund balance. So uh, the net, net change was positive by $5,400. Seventy-seven dollars at June 30th, 2014. Um, now down here, <clears throat> these are a couple calculations. Uh, these are just here to show trends or uh, compare from year to year. So as you look at the sheet, you can start to compare from year to year if you need to. But again, NHA has a sweep agreement, but we're doing these for all our schools, so I thought I'd explain it. Still, um, this uh, this um, percentage is takes ending general fund balance and divides it by total revenue, puts in a percentage. This one does the same, except it subtracts a restricted amount, if there was a restricted amount down here. This uh, does the same thing, except takes the ending general fund, divides it by the total expenditures. And then this one takes the ending general fund, it divides it by the beginning general fund. This one, if, uh, if the amount is above 100%, there was a positive net change. If this one is below 100%, there was a, there was a negative net change. So that's why this is uh, over 100, because there was a positive net change. So as we go scroll down, we get to this section. These four boxes are essentially a summary of uh, the note section of the audit and then page four of this sheet. So page four summarizes the notes of 
notes section of the audit. And these are just kind of numeric uh, tables or yeah, tables to summarize all that stuff. So there is no notes payable for a keystone. This is uh, usually associated with a state aid note. And then this is long-term debt is usually a, a revenue bond or a bond of some sort. Um, these aren't usually utilized by NHA schools. Down here, the capital operating lease section, this is the, uh, the building lease, and this is how the NHA model usually does it. So um, this is the, uh, the lease. So that's that. Uh, management fees uh, with the sweep agreement. I just put not applicable. And then these these uh, errors come up because this is not a numeric value. So um, that's that. Down here, we have our square footage. This is from the charter contract. So if this is inaccurate, please let us know. We'll have to update our records. Um, and then moving over here, we have a couple calculations derived from that square footage. So we have revenues per square foot, expense per square foot, difference. Now these ones just take the revenues and divide it by that square footage. That's exact. That's all it does. Um, this one, however, is a little bit different, payment per square foot. This takes the uh, the lease payment and divides by the total square footage, and that's what that's derived from. So um, this one over here, operations and maintenance per square foot, just uh, takes the line item operations and maintenance down here and then divides it by the square footage, and that's where that number com comes from. And then uh, this is a uh, square footage divided by a fall count, just takes the square footage, divides it by the... 2013 fall count, which is the corresponding count for this fiscal year, um, and that just kind of gives you a, a, a comparison for that reason. Now these are all just uh, comparisons to compare from uh, for whatever reason. So um, as we move down here, we have our general fund comparison. So this is a good sheet too. Uh, this is the June 30th, 2014 amounts, June 30th, 2013 amounts, the difference. So you compare from year to year to see if anything's changed or why something's changed. Um, now if you notice these uh, these numbers here, these are revenues again, these are expenditures. If you notice these numbers here, these are accounting code numbers. And if you're ever curious what one of these line item means, <coughs> excuse me, um, I took the accounting manual, put it in Word, and then you come up here, you push find, then you type whatever you're looking for over here. It has to be specific. You can't just type like uh, instruction or something broad like that. It has to be kind of specific. And then you search for it. <clears throat> Make sure you're on results. Then you can actually move through this document. Now, if you were looking about looking for basic programs, you'd see the code number right here. And basic programs are instructional activities, including enrichment designed primarily to prepare pupils for activities as citizens, family members, and workers as contrasted with programs designed to improve or overcome physical, mental, social, and or emotional handicaps includes pre-kindergarten. So <clears throat> if you're looking for the looking for the definition, that's a, a good way to find things pretty quickly and um, it's a good tool. So going back to our sheet, uh, this shows the the chain the twenty fourteen numbers again, twenty thirteen, so you can compare the compare the differences here. Now this area is the budgetary comparison. This just shows the original, final, and actual, and then does a difference between the but the actual and the final, and then the percent change. Um, so this over here shows that just is I don't know if there's I don't think this shows up on your sheet, but this is a comment that just states that the original budget is due July one, and it's basically a reminder for myself and others in the office that the original budget is uh, due much earlier in the year than the count information and. For that reason, there's usually a big discrepancy between um, the original and final in other schools. It's not as much the case in NHA schools, but um, as we move down here, these uh, instruction percent of revenues is uh, takes the total instruction. I'll move back up here. Takes the total instruction costs expenditures and then divides it by revenues and then puts it in a percentage. So this lets you see the trend in that respect from year to year, which uh, it stayed pretty consistent for Keystone Academy. So <clears throat> that's just a good way to compare things, to help ask questions. Um, fall 2013, uh, this takes the uh, revenues, divides by the fall 2013 count again, and then expenditures divided by the fall 2013 count again, and then the difference, just another calculation. As you move down to page three, this is the enrollment information. Now these numbers are derived from CEPI, which I'll show you what CEPI is. Um, if we go to browser, 
CEPI is the Center for Educational Performance and Information. If you want to get to these numbers, you come down to My School Data. You got to fill in a couple criteria, search criteria, um, and then you can get to this type of page. This is where the, uh, the all the headcounts are, and they go all the way back to 91, 92. So, um, I've dug through those uh, massive spreadsheets for you, and here's your fall counts. This last number is uh, the unaudited number I received through Epicenter on the DS4061 submission. So as the as I check the uh, CEPI numbers in the future, that number might slightly change, so it's worth noting about that. So that m number might change. So um, This over here is a calculation of the percent change from, from the corresponding fall count, spring to fall, fall to spring. So uh, a lot of our schools do have a slight decrease from the fall to the spring count for whatever reason, so that's pretty standard, just so you know. As they move down, this is a graphical display of the data um, for those who are visual people. So that's what that is. As we move down here, these numbers are again derived from CEPI. These are the, are the, the fall free and reduced lunch counts. And then over here, this is the percent free and reduced lunch count. So this takes the, uh, the, the free and reduced lunch count and divides it by the, the corresponding fall count. As we move down to... Uh, here we have another graph to show the graphical display of everything again. So I hope that that uh, graphical display is helpful. As you move down to page four, this is this is the informational piece I spoke about on page one. This takes the uh, the note section of the audit and rewrites it for you essentially. And then there's page numbers. So this is from page six and this is from from page sixteen. So this is the uh, building lease information right here. Um, down here, this is uh, the reference to the management company and the sweep agreement. That's on page 12 of the audit. Again, this is all directly from the audit. These are not my words. Um, as we move down, there's no findings, which is good. Um, and then uh, in the BMCC notes section, there's just a couple more things that aren't specifically related to debt or the management agreement. So um, the charter expires in June 30, 2019. It's just always good to know that. Um, and then uh, this is, this is reviewed, and here's my contact information if there are any questions or comments. Um, Albert B at bmcc.edu. Thanks for all you do for the children of Michigan, and I hope you got some value out of this. Have a good one. Bye.